driving four and a half hours to Great Basin National Park. I have a campsite there tonight, which is great. Um, so I highly recommend for the national parks, especially in the summertime, to book a campsite. Um, if you're fully self-contained, you can book a primitive campsite, like a tent campsite, and you can stay in your van, so that's fine. Um, most of the national parks, a lot of them don't really have amenities like showers and things, um, but that's fine. So for the next like six national parks that I'll be going to in Nevada, which is only one, and then the other five, I think in California, I actually have um, a campsites booked. And the reason for that is because uh, a lot of them have timed entry or they don't have timed entry and then get, get super crowded in the summer. So if you get there the night before and you have a campsite, you're already in the park uh, the next morning. Now for Great Basin, which will be for today uh, on this video, um, what I need to do is try to do my hike tonight because I have an 11 hour drive tomorrow down to Sequoia. Uh, National Park. So tomorrow is going to be a driving day and then the next day, which I think today's Friday, so tomorrow Saturday's driving day, which is fine because, you know, I don't really want to go somewhere when it's super busy. Um, Sunday will be Sequoia and then heading down to Kings Canyon. So then I have a campsite at Kings Canyon tomorrow, uh, Sunday night. Um, yeah, Saturday night is, tonight Friday is Great Basin. Then I have Sequoia Saturday night campsite. Then I have campsite at Kings Canyon and the campsite at Yosemite, and so that'll put me through till Monday, and then after that I go into Lassen Volcanic uh, National Park, so I have a campsite there too, <laughs> and then after that into Redwoods. So I think I'm pretty much booked up um, for places to stay. It's very difficult and not really difficult to find places to park in California, um, but I really want to stay in the national parks. I think it's a great experience, um, but also I don't want to be like, dry, like parking in a neighborhood or something. I want to try to be out in the wilderness. Um, I will keep an eye on this tick bite that I got when I was stranded on my, my bike packing trip, which you'll see like a couple videos before. So very thank you, thankful to everybody that rescued me. Um, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> I don't think I would ever be able to do the race. I, I talked to people at the restaurant the night when I was in Silverton and I was getting a sandwich to go. And the guy next to me is like, yeah, I did the race the train race like three years in a row. And I'm like, so the locals call it race the train because the steam train never wins and it's the same the steam train goes the same route pretty much as the uh, as the mountain bike race uh, but yeah i don't think i'll ever do that again <laughs> so it was fun experience at least i got about 50 miles of riding in two days so that, that's pretty good i haven't done a lot of riding this year but i think i'll stick with downhill mountain biking um so yeah so now i've got a four and a half hour drive it's absolutely beautiful i'm heading toward Kanab, utah and it's so green and like red rocks. It's just gorgeous out here. It's very, very hot though. It is actually, no, it's about 80 degrees right now. Um, but it will be quite cold at Great Mason, which is great. So I was going to go earlier this year, but they had like 12 feet of snow. So um, what I want to do is just a quick hike. I think it's like four miles. I did go to Walmart in Antelope County Canyon uh, this morning. Um, so I did, or in Page rather, uh, Page, Utah. So I did get um, a Page, Arizona. It's so close, like my BLM was two miles from where I was going to be going to the tour and it was in Utah and yeah, I was in Arizona anyway, it's right next to each other. It's all Navajo Nation uh, tribal land by the way. So I am, uh, yeah, so I picked up a bunch of like bug spray and like um, like uh, butane so I can actually boil water and make cups of tea now <laughs> when I'm at my campsites. I have no idea how to use one of those stoves. I got it for $25 on Amazon. Um, they usually, jet boils are usually $160 or something, and I found one for $25, so hopefully it doesn't blow up in my, space, my face or something. I can't even speak. I am just, I'm just driving, and it's been good. And so anyway, I'll see you a bit later. God, this was a tough one to get to, but I'm here at the Great Basin Visitor Center. Okay, it's just after four o'clock um, Pacific date time. So I'm gonna go in, hopefully they're still open. I need to figure out where my campsite is and also what hike I'm gonna do. Okay, so let's go in the Visitor Center, see if I can get my information. All right, okay. So they're very lax out here. 
Um, so the hike I was going to do is the um, bristle cone trail and it's closed. There's also no water in the entire, whoops, drive. No water in the entire national park. Thankfully I have water and I have a jet boil, so, or a, a knockoff jet boil, so I can make tea. Um, so she did suggest from my campsite I can do the Lehman Creek hike, which does go toward Wheeler Peak. There's another Wheeler Peak. That's like the fourth Wheeler Peak I've seen. Um, I did hike up to it in uh, Taos a couple years ago in uh, New Mexico. But yeah, so the Wheeler Peak, um, uh, the Lehman, Lehman Creek Trail is the one that's from my campsite. So if I just do four miles, two miles out, two miles back, then that will um, give me to, uh, send me to the Alpine Meadow, she said. There is nothing in this entire town. I went into the uh, little um, stargazer uh, cafe or whatever, and I walk in, I'm like, do you have a menu? They go, no, we're not allowed to serve food, but they have coffee. Um, it's just like a little gear store, like a tiny, tiny little, like not even a convenience store. Um, so I need to go down here and take a picture of the proper sign. I'm so glad I'm here. This is cute, but there is nothing. For, you know, I mean, Baker, Nevada has literally like a population of like 200. You'd think that for a national park, they would have more stuff, but they don't. <laughs> um, so it's kind of like all the state parks in Texas. A lot of them have nothing going on around it. It's like, we want to pour money into your town and there's no infrastructure. So, I mean, I get it. I mean, this is like way out of the way and it's kind of one of those national parks people generally don't go to. I mean. Zion is three hours down the road um, so people go down there and those towns are just built up with like a thousand million things so anyway so I'm gonna go this way to the main uh, National Park entry and I've been driving for almost six hours so I would like to do a quick hike let's see Great Basin National Park the visitor center is not actually in let's see here directions National Park. Start. Okay. Five minutes away. So another, okay. So when you get to Baker, the Stargazer Cafe, not Cafe, it's right there. Then you go to the visitor center, which is like past the road you have to go on. They have to backtrack and go four miles this way to the entrance to the National Park. It is beautiful out here. Um, but, you know, the National Parks in the U.S. are National Parks for various reasons. If you ever see like uh, the um, the artist that made all of the posters based on the worst Yelp reviews where it's like um, like arches, it goes, it doesn't look like the license plate or Yosemite, it's like, you know, bugs will eat your face or um, Yellowstone, it's like, it's just a big boil, like go home and boil your own water. So it's kind of funny, but it's true. But it's like people go, well, I don't know why it's a national park. It's kind of stupid. It's like, it's for conservation reasons. So if you actually like, you know, research and talk to the rangers and ask them why is this, you know, a protected area, they'll tell you. Maybe it's the wildlife or the flora or the fauna or the, you know, the ears are popping, um, the landscape or, you know, it's protected land or there's some reason. So just, you know, learn, get your learn on. Go to a little museum that's in the visitor center, learn something. I didn't go in there, I just took a picture, but anyway, so whatever it says in there, that's why the reason this is a national park. Um, but yeah, it's the only one Nevada has. Um, well, no, they have the Grand, they have the Grand Canyon. So they have part of the Grand Canyon, um, I think. Yeah, they do. Yeah, so you go to Vegas and you go to Grand Canyon. They're part of the Grand Canyon with Arizona. Um, but Utah's got most of the national parks. But Arizona, though, Northern Arizona was beautiful. That drive all the way through Kanab, all the way up past where you start to go to Bryce and start to go to Zion. It was just beautiful. Well, that's a beautiful drive. They ended up in the mountains in the Dixie National Forest. I didn't really film anything because I was just like in awe. Um, but it was a long drive. It was four, it was five hours, five and a half hours, and uh, I gained an hour. So um, I, you know, really it's like 5:30 right now, and it's only 4:30 here. So I'll do that quick hike, and I think I'm going to chill out. Um, you can go to the Layman Caves uh, tour tomorrow morning. Every day at 8 a.m. they do walk-ins. Now on reservation.gov, which is where you book all the national park stuff, like for camping and all that, um, it says like it's not available. And so I think the ranger said, well, you know, maybe it's sold out. But then she said every morning at eight o'clock they do walk-ins. So I think it's just all completely walk-ins. So uh, had I known that I would have done the cave tour tomorrow morning, but I'll, I'll come back through here another time. If I go up to, or well, when I go up to like, um, you know, 
Utah, like northern Utah, and then I'll come through here if I go up to like Salt Lake City or something. Um, but yeah, this is really pretty. This is like a Colorado without all the big trees. <laughs> so, yeah, so this is Nevada, and then after this tomorrow morning, because I have to drive to Sequoia tomorrow. So tomorrow morning at um, like 6 a.m., and we get up at 5, uh, depending on how I sleep. So get, on, get, get up at 5, it's going to be cold tonight here, which will be good. Uh, leave by 6, get into Sequoia by 5 or 6. I'll be on, um, I'm already on West Coast time. So I don't gain any time, but I'm going to go through the mountains, through Bishop and Mammoth, and I think through that area should be fine this time of year. Um, I'm kind of done with mountains on an actual mountain bike, um, but I'm okay with driving. So I don't know where I can get gas from here, though. So I only have 192 miles left on the gas, and I think there should be a gas station in Bacon, hopefully. There's nothing else around here. Um, but yeah, then I drive through northern Nevada into uh, eastern California, central eastern California, through the mountains down into Sequoia. So excited for Sequoia. Tomorrow's a driving day and I'll be at my campsite in Sequoia tomorrow and then be hiking uh, the next day. So yeah, so I'm still driving to the campsite from the main road. Not a lot out here, so make sure you've got plenty of water, plenty of gas. I do need to start looking for an extra gas canister. I would like to have what I go through, like all the northern plains and all that, I would like to have extra gas with me. Because with the bikes on the back and the bike covers, um, I feel like I'm getting more drag. So even though I get good gas mileage with the Nissan, I don't want to be stranded in the middle of like the Grand Tetons with like no, no ability to get gas. So I'm gonna get probably a 20 gallon gas canister which would almost fill up a tank so I'm gonna look into that I need to also research how I would store it in my van so I'm assuming I don't just like I don't know <laughs> I don't want to die of fumes either so okay so we should be here we go here's the sign so let me take a picture of the sign I will tell you right now, the Lehman Caves Visitor Center is far more helpful than the visitor center that's outside the park. So go in the park. I missed the turnoff. So the campsite is on the Wheeler Peak Scenic Drive Road, which is kind of where I'll be doing the hikes. Let me go back and do that. It's warm, but it's gonna cool down. So yeah, let's go do this. Okay, this is absolutely, <laughs> this is so beautiful. I've got one neighbor there. This is my camping spot. Let's do a tour quickly. I have a massive parking space. If you have an RV, you're not gonna fit in these. These are tent camping. But look, I've got this. I've got this like platform viewing area right across from the van. Oh my God, there's a bumbling brook. You know me and my bumbling brooks. It is cold up here. This is gorgeous. You know what? I was not expecting anything, but this is beautiful. I've got one tent camper there. I've got me. I'm going to try to straighten up a little bit better. Although that might be all right. This is beautiful. And I don't have anyone next to me. Let's see what's over here. So down here is my own little private little garden with a picnic area. There's Prudence. This is adorable. This is like 10 bucks. This is where your tent would be. And then this is the uh, camping stove. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, I'm starting my hike. So I have to go up to the road and then start a little bit further down. This is great. This is the first national park I've been to where you're allowed to collect dead wood uh, as firewood. That's a new one. And the kids next to me across the way, hopefully I won't smell their fire. Um, but yeah, seriously, that is beautiful. I'm getting no sun though for some reason. Actually, no, I'm getting no sun because my power banks are at 100%. So, oh my God, I don't even think today. Okay, lots of bugs and mosquitoes. Got my mosquito repellent on. This is the trailhead and it looks like someone lost some hiking poles. So I don't know if I should take them and see if anybody lost them on the way. All right, I'll take them and I'll give them to the camp host. So anyway, <laughs> yeah, free hiking poles. There's no cars here. I don't even know how to use hiking poles. I don't use hiking poles because my upper body is totally shit because of my spine. But anyway, this is the Layman Creek Trail. 3.4 miles one way. 
uh, goes to the Wheeler Peak Campground. I'm not going to go the whole way. I'm just going to go to Meadow Views, 1.6 miles, and then back. So I'm going to go not all the way, just to the uh, meadow. Yeah. Okay. This is cool. It's hardly anybody here. It's like a Friday. But this is out of the way, by the way. So yeah, so I've got hiking poles, and I'll return these um, to the camp host or... Uh, the camp house is like 90 years old uh, so that's why i was like i didn't know you could like take bits of wood like this over here and now i can point because i have a pointer um bits of wood off the floor and then burn them that's the first national park i've been in unless there's others leave in the comments if there's other national parks that allow that because i'm pretty sure that gathering of firewood is prohibited um but i'm not going to be you know negative nancy today it's just don't burn my van down <laughs> so i hate fire like the smell of fire like bonfires and stuff it's just uh it stinks up the van i don't like cigarette smoke it's just i grew up with a smoker and my sister so anyway okay enough talking let's go hike this is absolutely gorgeous so pretty and pristine and cold actually the sun's beaten down but it's going to cool down tonight yeah, I'll come back and spend a little bit more time do the cave tours and all that. Um, but for now, just a preview of another bumbling brook. I hear a waterfall. So I'm going to go down this ferry pass. <laughs> Is there a waterfall down here? This isn't the trail. This is another trail. And I hear a waterfall. Although you go to so many national parks, you start hearing things like, I swear I saw a moose. I don't think I can see it from down here. Oh, maybe I can. Please be a waterfall. <gasps> There's a waterfall, holy shit. <laughs> it's a double rainbow. All right. So if you are so bold, you can go to the 2.8 miles more from here, and I've already gone one mile, uh, up to the Wheeler Peak Campground. You can take the scenic road as well. It's like an 8 or 10% um, incline, so my van was a little bit struggling. So I'm 0 0.6 miles from the trailhead, but I've gone a mile. So that means I have one more mile of this trail to the Aspen uh, Meadow, and then I'll turn around and come back down. It is quite steep. And after driving for five hours, five and a half hours, doing the Antelope Canyon hike, waking up in BLM land, and uh, going to Horseshoe Bend in the morning, it's a lot of walking, but it's good. It's all good. And the sun will set soon. So I'm going west, I believe. from the meadow and you will need your grippy shoes waterproof shoes but this is gorgeous so you're hiking in this uh, bumbling brook next to the bigger bumbling brook so yeah get your grippy shoes and uh, if you find hiking poles they come in useful so I haven't seen anyone up here um, since it's like after five the uh, visitor center is closed so I'll drop these off in the morning um, I don't think I'll drop them off to the camp host. Uh, she doesn't seem to look like she leaves her little RV. She looks like she's super old, but that's, that's funny though. It is good though if you get to be a camp host somewhere. I know a couple people doing that this summer and it's really a great way to kind of, you know, experience a national park or a state park and, you know, live in your rig for free. Oh, it's very, very steep. I'm also quite tired. And it's very loud, but it's beautiful. That is beautiful. So yeah, it snowed, it snowed like 12 feet or something over uh, Christmas and the holidays. And so when I tried to come here in uh, February, January, February, the park was uh, open, but the uh, hiking was closed. So for me, it's like I wouldn't go anywhere unless I can actually do something. You know, I'm not like those people that just go and take a photo at the front of the park and leave. We'll go get a magnet. So, okay, a bit of a muddy bit coming up. Almost there, half a mile to go. And there it is, two miles up from my campsite, is the Aspen Meadow. 
that was quite a trek. That was fantastic though. So yeah, you can go another 1.8 miles and go to the Wheeler Peak, which is way up there. Whew. I don't know what my altitude is. Hang on, let me check. So I'm at 9,000 feet, which feels like nothing because I've been at nine or 10,000 feet for the last couple weeks, except when I flew home to Houston over the weekend. This is beautiful. I can never get enough of mountains. <laughs> I live 53 feet above sea level in Houston and I live on the second floor. So I will take all the extra natural elevation I can get. But there it is, the Aspen Meadow. So I'm not gonna go any further. I've done two miles, I'm gonna go back. I will definitely come back and like I said, do the Lehman uh, cave tour, which they have walk-ins at 8 a.m. every morning. Um, so even though it says it was booked, that's why I didn't do it. I was like, I'll just do an evening hike and then go to Sequoia tomorrow. But actually I want to get to Sequoia because I need to take a shower somewhere in Bakersfield at a Planet Fitness. So I have an 11 hour drive through the mountains tomorrow. Actually, yeah, I'll be going through Bakersfield, going through the California mountains, the Sierras, I think it is. And then, um, yeah, getting into Sequoia and then Kings Canyon, Yosemite, Lesson Volcanic and Redwoods. So that is like the next five or six days. It's going to be fantastic. And I do something in every park. And the fact that I can camp in the national park in my van, oh my God, it's only like 10 bucks. Okay, I'm gonna go back, take my photo and head back. The end of the hike that was four miles and that was fantastic so i'm going to go back to my campsite sorry i had to cut you short i had to pee but t i tell you these bathrooms are epic all right <laughs> okay down the road downhill back to my campsite Ooh, i'm getting bitten by shit. i gotta check the ticks now i'm paranoid i'm getting ticks in places that i don't think i can check on my own that's the only downside to solo traveling hang on here's my psa where's my blue sky there we go hang on so the only downside to solo, excuse me, solo traveling is that you don't have anybody else that can like look on you for ticks. <laughs> so you just gotta have a lot of handheld mirrors and hope, hope for the best. My leg is itching though. I got bitten a lot, sorry, I'm like have the hiccups. I got bitten a lot when I was doing my bike packing and I got one tick bite on my back, which hasn't done anything. I mean, I put some antiseptic on it um, put some antibiotic cream and uh, kind of just put a band-aid and it seems to be okay but I got a bunch of mosquito bites on my leg so I forgot that like mountain you know mountain areas have mosquitoes so it's only going to get worse as I get into the Pacific Northwest and up into uh, Washington and Oregon anyway okay so now back to the van I'm going to try and make a cup of tea with my new jet boil and then later when it's dark dump out my toilet in the uh, dump station so I don't want to do the walk of shame walking down to the dump station with my porta potty that's very, very full right now. There's Prudence. I have neighbors and I'm hoping nobody has a fire. Um, yeah, I'll be fine. I mean, even if my vent is closed, it'll be cold enough for that. So hopefully these guys aren't going to be loud. I don't know what they're doing. They're going to cook on a grill, so that's fine. Always park next to the people that have the food. And these guys, a bunch of like millennial kids. Uh, they're like college kids, it's all right. I was one of those once. But look how big my space is though. Seriously fantastic. So yeah, I'm gonna go get my jet boil and uh, just go sit over in my little area. I'm gonna test out my bug lamp, my mosquito thing, if it's gonna work. I think I have to charge it. And then also the, um, the jet boil and make a cup of tea. And then I'm going to wipe myself down with baby wipes, which is my pseudo shower, and camp up for the night. So it is now 7.46. So that was good. It was a good hike. That's right, yeah. It was about 5.46. So two hours hiking, and let me make some tea. Very, very rarely do I ever actually, like, relax and camp at places I'm at. Usually I just get somewhere quick, sleep, get up early, play all day drive to the next place, sleep. So it's nice to just kind of chill out and it's gonna be dark in about an hour. So now I have to figure out how to attach this butane to this little um, cheapo jet boil thing. 
it should be self lighting i just have to wait for it to go pa 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 i also have this bug thing uh, that should kill the bugs or attract the bugs maybe i'll put it over there and then i have some gluten-free cookies which is all i have for cookies right now i should have picked up some at the bakery i was at the other day I have my tea and some extra little stevia packets, spicy chai from Trader Joe's, water, and dairy-free creamer. So I'm just gonna make a cup of tea. This is literally the production that I have to do just to make something, because I have a kitchen because it came with a house. So cooking is not my forte. This may take me until the sun goes down, um, but it is cooling down a lot. The sun has gone over the mountains. Those guys look like they're just going to be cooking. Hopefully they're going to be camping on the other side. I do like this. There's a lot of trees. So if I was tent camping down here, I'd be close to them. But I'm over here in the van. You could also probably, nah, I was going to say you could probably pitch a tent down here too. Or <laughs> leave your cigarettes in here, stupid dumbasses. Anyway, all right, let me make a cup of tea. So this is what it looks like. You get a big pot that's about 800 mils, a little pot and then you can actually store the butane inside it doesn't come with butane obviously and tsa let me carry this on the plane so as a carry-on so just tell them you know you're camping and going to awesome places so here's the directions move my keys out of the way here's the directions so six steps just to set up the little burner but yeah 25 dollars on amazon but much much better deal than the 180 dollars for the jet boil i literally have no idea how to work this it's not lighting and I'm eating all my cookies and not even making my tea. Let me go ask these guys if they know. Okay, the guy helped me. We have fire and I may die. Okay, so let me put it down here. I'm such a dumbass. I'm gonna be terrified to put this butane back in my van. I think when you undo it, it does. it's not gonna leak, leak gas everywhere, but I'll leave it outside anyway. Okay, so this is now lit. I guess I can put more gas. There we go. All right, that's a lot of gas. So he like did it in one go. He like literally just put a little bit and it lit with one click so i think i was doing too much gas but yeah so that should be boiling and i have some tea soon that's pretty cool oh my god i have a jet boil look at that 25 bucks no more like seven dollar starbucks i can just have my trader joe's spicy chai more people are showing up they got like three cars over there let me see if they want to park next to me by the way, don't bring this thing up like that. <laughs> so, I was like, they could park next to me, maybe. Are my lights on? No. My lights look like they're on. They're not on. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> it's just like, these are people that come here all the time, and then there's me. It's actually getting cold. Where's my boiled water? Anyway, I'll definitely come back here. I think I'd probably stay a little bit further up. Although campsite, campsite 7 is fantastic. You don't have anyone across from you. They're quite far. You don't really have anyone near you on the other side very easily. Their um, little table is like way in the corner. And then the people across from me, their um, fire pit is way on the other side. Okay, the moment of truth. I didn't die, although I did turn it the wrong way when I was turning it off. All right, let me mix this up. Put you back over there. There's a state prison way over there. I don't know if you can see it. It is right there. That is a state prison in the middle of freaking nowhere. <laughs> that is crazy. I have reached Tanopa, which is a weird little town, middle of nowhere, and I'm heading toward Bishop, California. So this is the back way. I could go through Vegas, which would put me in a hundred and something odd heat. Um, and I've taken the 15 a million times. So I'd rather go this way. This way I go through the mountains, a little bit more interesting drive. Beautiful, beautiful central Nevada. Um, but I'm going to the gas station first. I really need to get gas. And yeah, so let's get gas, use the restroom and keep going. Okay, I just got gas in Tanopa and I am terrified of this. Look at this. This is a clown motel. <laughs> this looks terrifying. This looks absolutely, what? 
Uh, I don't think I'd want to stay here. <laughs> anyway, I just pulled in for a second to take a photo. That's so crazy. <laughs> yeah, I would never want to stay in a place that has uh, this dude <laughs> in the middle. Uh, all right, let's go. Okay, so I'm at the California Inspection Station in Benton. This is right past the border. RVs, autos. Let's see what we're going to do here. Let's see here. Hello. So, how are you? Good, how are you? Great. Where are you traveling from? Um, well, I live in Houston. I'm traveling all the way through uh, New Mexico, Colorado, Utah, and then heading to Sequoia National Park. So I just came from Great, uh, Great Basin National Park, heading to Sequoia National Park. Right. It's a 12 hour drive. What fruits and vegetables do you have with you? Uh, bananas. Bananas, that's fine. Any plants or firewood? No, no. I, I don't cook and I'm, a, I'm not a plant parent, so. Yes. <laughs> the plants tend to die pretty quickly in here, so. Yes, we've seen a lot of travel, not too well. Yeah, yeah, thanks so much. Thank All you. right. Well, that was definitely not your uh, Texan uh, inspection stations. That was not Border Patrol, that was agriculture. So there's a woman in there cutting firewood. So apparently if you bring your own firewood, sorry for all the bugs, if you bring your own firewood, um, you have to give it to them to dispose of and they will give you a whole set of firewood from this area. So little known fact, which you should actually know, you cannot transport firewood more than 50 miles from where you got it from. So I've just driven like 300 miles or so. And if I had firewood from Great Basin, I cannot bring it into California because that's further than 50 miles. So anyway, okay, moving on. <laughs> 